My name is Tyler Sinnott. Today I'll be sharing with you my research findings on the usage, functionality, and benefits of constructed wetlands with the purpose of treating wastewater. And I'll be comparing some of these characteristics of constructed wetlands to conventional wastewater treatment plants. First, we will start with the definition of a constructed wetland. According to one of Professor Lascano's lectures, constructed wetlands are treatment systems that use natural processes involving wetland vegetation, soils, and their associated microbial assemblages to improve water quality. The water that is typically being improved by passing through these wetlands is wastewater. Just so everyone is on the same page, here's a definition that I made to describe wastewater. Wastewater is the resulting water that has been altered during a human use. Uses can be related to domestic, commercial, agricultural, industrial, etc. human activities. The wastewater is altered by the addition of organic and or inorganic substances that were not originally a part of the chemical makeup of the water and effectively lower the water quality. Some examples of wastewater, but not all types of wastewater, are stormwater, effluents from agricultural operations, municipal wastewater, and industrial wastewater. Each type of wastewater will be contaminated with different types of combinations of suspended and or dissolved contaminants. Why are constructed wetlands used? The first reason why constructed wetlands are used is because they are an effective, pseudo-natural tool for treating wastewater, and they are a great alternative or an addition to conventional wastewater treatment plants. By pseudo-natural, I mean that the constructed wetlands act as a natural wetland with wetland vegetation, soil, hydrology, and habitat that supports wildlife, but are human engineered. A second reason why they are used, according to the EPA, is because constructed wetlands can also be a cost-effective and technically feasible approach to treating wastewater. Wetlands are often less expensive to build than conventional wastewater treatment options, have low operating and maintenance expenses, and can handle fluctuating water levels. A couple more reasons provided by the EPA is because constructed wetlands promote water reuse and public use benefits. Functions of constructed wetlands. Functions of wetlands that make constructed wetlands feasible for the treatment of wastewater provided by the Environmental Protection Agency include the settling of suspended particulate matter due to the slowing of water movement, filtration and chemical precipitation through contact of the water with the substrate and litter, adsorption and ion exchange on the surfaces of plants, substrate, sediment, and litter, breakdown and transformation of pollutants by microorganisms and plants, uptake and transformation of nutrients by microorganisms and plants, and predation and natural die-off of pathogens. Designs of constructed wetlands. A few different designs of constructed wetlands, according to the EPA, include surface flow wetlands, subsurface flow wetlands, and hybrid wetlands. Surface flow wetlands have standing water and look much like natural marshes and can provide habitat and aesthetic benefits as well as wastewater treatment. This design of wetland is typically used to treat mine drainage and agricultural runoff. Subsurface flow wetlands have a water level that lie just below the surface of the soil and water flow is usually downward through a sand or gravel substrate and penetrates to the bottom of the wetland bed. 
Hybrid wetland systems incorporate surface and subsurface flow wetland characteristics. In a hybrid or multi-stage wetland system, there are different cells that are, that are designed for different types of reactions that treat the wastewater of specific contaminants within each cell. Advantages of constructed wetlands. Some of the advantages constructed wetlands have when compared to wastewater treatment plants provided by the EPA include benefits such as wetlands are able to tolerate a level of fluctuations in flow while conventional treatment plants cannot. They facilitate water reuse and recycling. In addition to these two advantages that involve the treatment of wastewater, they provide numerous benefits that go beyond water treatment. They provide habitat for many wetland, wildlife, and organisms. They can be built to fit harmoniously into the landscape. They can provide aesthetic enhancement of open spaces. And they are an environmentally sensitive approach to wastewater treatment that is viewed with favor by the general public. Disadvantages of constructed wetlands. Although there are many valuable benefits that serve humans and ecosystems that constructed wetlands provide, there are also some logistical disadvantages when they are compared to conventional wastewater treatment plants. The EPA states that these disadvantages include that constructed wetlands are generally require larger land areas than do conventional wastewater treatment plants. Wetland treatment may be economical relative to other options only where land is available and affordable. This limits the usage of constructed wetlands where land is at a premium, such as in big cities. Another issue is that performance may be less consistent than in conventional treatment. Wetland treatment efficiencies may vary seasonally in response to changing environmental conditions, including rainfall and drought. While the average performance over the year may be acceptable, wetland treatment cannot be relied upon if effluent quality must meet stringent discharge standards at all times. Additionally, the constructed wetlands, just like natural wetlands, require a minimum amount of water to survive. While wetlands can tolerate temporary drawdowns, they cannot withstand complete drying. With this dependence on consi consistent hydrologic inputs, the effectiveness of constructed wetlands in treating wastewater will be negatively affected in arid climates or climates with large seasonal variations in precipitation patterns. However, I have an idea that if there's a way to store sufficient amounts of water nearby, the constructed wetland can receive artificial hydrologic inputs to sustain wetland health and treatment effectiveness throughout the year. Case study of a constructed wetland being used. Clayton County Water Authority. Clayton County Water Authority, or the CCWA, built a wetland located just south of Atlanta, Georgia that serves a population of a quarter million people. The CCWA switched from a spray irrigation land application to constructed wetlands because constructed wetland treatment had been, quote, proven to require much less land, energy, and maintenance than the irrigation systems. The CCWA estimates the cost to build wastewater facilities using constructed wetlands at $4.73 a gallon, compared to the nearly $10 a gallon using the more conventional methods. That's less than half the cost. The transition from irrigation to wetlands has also resulted in significant energy savings due to reduced need for pumping and maintenance. The CCWA has reduced maintenance staff along with reductions in equipment and materials. Rather than maintaining miles of irrigation pipes and numerous valves and pumps, routine maintenance consists primarily of vegetation management. 
Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and learned a thing or two. Here are the three academic sources that I used to obtain all my information in making this PowerPoint.